I want to talk on nudity. <laughs> what? Yeah. I know that may shock you, but it is a biblical theme. <laughs> but I, I'm not calling it nudity. I'm asking a question. Are you clothed or naked? Yes. In the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. And that's where the point is, is that a pastor, a truly Holy Spirit filled on fire, God loving pastor, a shepherd of the flock sees a man rip off all his clothing inside the solemn assembly of God, the church, disrobe and run in front of the church, in front of children and women, naked. The very last thing he would ever do is come into the sanctuary and repeat this blasphemous action as a punchline or a joke on a sermon about nakedness. Period. And I don't believe that I'm a wrong. If you were to go and talk to 10,000 pastors, Pentecostal charismatic teachers, look them straight in the eye and say, is it a good thing that a man ripped off all his clothes in front of the solemn assembly inside of a sanctuary of a church? Would you use it as a punchline of nakedness inside of your sermon? No little lies in this video, right? So viewer discretion is advised. Please support your local food bank, Drug and Alcohol Center. All right. So this sickle, and only a sickle would ever say what this guy is going to say. January 28th, three weeks ago, he thinks it's hilarious. A grown man during a church service in Kelowna ripped off all of his clothes, butt naked. You know, all right, so... I downloaded it because this this service here, there's no captions, and I want to really go over this. We're also going to be looking at this is an event in in Canada. This is in Canada as well. Why is my computer so slow? And this man talks about another event where a man rips off his T-shirt. And the reason I have my thumbnail, my computer seems to be slow. Man completely naked in church. Pastor David Wilkerson, we're going to look at one of Pastor David Wilkerson's sermons. And I'm going to do everything I can to compose myself. But all, like I reiterate, only a sickle, scumbag, would ever think it's funny that a grown man would take all of his clothes off during a worship service inside of church. All right. So I'm going to keep my calm in this. So here we go. To be clothed with white garments means I have to be naked. Well, then so be it. Right. I'm going to have to be naked. And what is it actually referring to? No, we're not, we're not going to do what sometimes I've heard these stories occasionally. Remember a friend of mine, he was, they were having a conference in Kelowna. And all of a sudden, in the middle of this high point of worship, this guy starts running across completely naked. <laughs> And yeah, right in the worship service. And, and uh, he got tackled and taken out by the ushers, but they're asking him, like, what were you thinking? He said, I don't know, I just felt so free. <laughs> okay, so we're, that's not what we're looking for. I'm glad you feel free. I'm glad the presence of God does not make you, you self-conscious and feel judged. Hallelujah. <laughs> but that's not the kind of nakedness we're looking for this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> We're not going to do what sometimes I've heard these stories occasionally. Remember a friend of mine, he was, they were having a conference in Kelowna. And all of a sudden, in the middle of this high point of worship, this guy starts running across completely naked. All right. High point of worship, this guy starts running a cloth completely naked. And yeah, right in the worship service. And, and uh, he got tackled and taken out by the ushers, but they're asking him, like, what were you thinking? He said, I don't know, I just felt so free. <laughs> okay, so we're, that's not what we're looking for. I'm glad you feel free. I'm glad the presence of God does not make you... you Self-conscious and feel judged. Okay, Hallelujah. So, blasphemy. 
that the Holy Spirit would ever make a grown man take all of his clothes off inside of a church in front of children. Hallelujah. And what's even more stunning to me is that people inside of his church think it's hilarious. Does anyone even think about the children? Right? Let me go listen one more time. Running across completely naked. Like my... All right? And, yeah, right in the worship service. And, and uh, he got tackled and taken out by the ushers. But they're asking him, like, what were you thinking? He said, I don't know. I just felt so free. <laughs> okay, so we're, that's not what we're looking for. I'm glad you feel free. I'm glad the presence of God does not make you, you self-conscious and feel judged. Hallelujah. He's glad <laughs> that he feels not judged, not self-conscious, hallelujah, but that's not the naked we're looking for. So, if I was in the audience, you better believe I would have grabbed that guy, and then I would have phoned the police. As far as I understand, you can't run around naked st still. Isn't it against the law? There's got to be some type of stipulation that men can't run around in front of children inside a church naked. All right. But that's not the kind of nakedness we're looking for this morning. <laughs> he thinks it's Boy, hilarious. God. Only a scumbag would ever say that that's funny. All right? All right. Now, I'm going to try to keep my calm. This guy... Just as Casey's going to come up here, I'm just going to ask our ushers that are, have prepared our tithe and communion just to come to the front, and then they're going to release the communion throughout the body and once that's done Casey's going to walk us through communion he's inside a prophetic conference as well We're gonna turn around. Story. I really feel like we need to invite the prophets and some of the apostolic leaders I think we need to make some declarations over men in this nation to Come take on. their spots so Renee Barry Wontroy if you're in here guys while they're coming up I just feel like I had a buddy that, um, he felt so much freedom in a service one day. He's from Scotland. He just couldn't contain himself. He ripped off his shirt, and he ran to the front, and he yelled, freedom at the, loud of, at the loudest. All right, so this sounds like a different story where a man in Scotland, this one is talking about the butt-naked laughter, hilarious, hallelujah, naked man in front of children in Kelowna. This man is talking about a man taking off his shirt from Scotland, right? He could. So we're going to speak freedom, amen? We're going to declare freedom oh, no. over men in the name Sorry. of Jesus. We're so technical. we're going to say freedom together. So he didn't even say it was bad. He's act. let me, sorry, let's read this in context. This is all part of the same group. I had a buddy that was so free in one service from Scotland, he couldn't contain himself. He ripped off his shirt and ran in front and yelled, Freedom, at the loudest voice. I just feel like I had a buddy that um, he felt so much freedom in a service one day. He's from Scotland. He just couldn't contain himself. He ripped off his shirt and he ran to the front and he yelled, Freedom, at the, loud of, at the loudest he could. So we're going to speak freedom, amen? We're going to declare freedom over men in the name of Jesus. So we're going to say freedom. I don't know if that's even more bizarre. He's, he's actually promoting this as a good thing. All right. All right, so now if you don't know who this guy is, they like to wear costumes. This is what's called a mental costume. And I, all right, so here, let's just keep going here. That little bit is just gone. And I appreciate Mark Brisbaugh and the apostolic teaching mantle, this apostle to the world. He's going out. Now, I do this not necessarily for him, but for Canada. Yes. It's time for the apostolic chiefs to come forward. Okay, so that's all. If you don't know what the Apostolic Chiefs, that ties back to Bob Jones and the football prophecy of the Kansas City Chiefs prophecy of Bob Jones. And of course, he is a global prophet to the world. 
Now, he's been working very hard at his YouTube. I don't know, my computer's a little slow. We're going to get to Pastor David Wilkerson in a second because of this. <laughs> you know, right? So I come from the Pentecostals, and my mom just sent me Pastor David Wilkerson book, and I literally got this in the mail this morning from Colorado. She also sent me another $20. <laughs> my mom, everybody loves her mom. This is Pastor David Wilkerson. And Pastor David Wilkerson, in one of his sermons, he talked about... Um, the disagree the, this is a fulfillment of the pro, of the bible we will get to the bible in this video now the reason we're looking the reason i showed you that is that i have a tremendous passion and burden for the for the church and this this man this he likes to be called the inspired priest i'll put on the screen i, I talked about it this morning i said so according to bob jones that is a secret hand sh signal of the inspired priest that's what he, he, as far as I understand, he's the only inspired priest in the world, according to Bob Jones. And out of four or five, well, out of five years of doing videos, he's the only inspired priest possibly in North America. Now, he's also a, an apostle to the world. And the reason I'm showing you this is, this is his church. I have a connection to Spruce Grove Community Church. I have a connection to this church. First of all, it's a POAC church, Pentecostal Assembly of Canada. My grandma was part of the POAC church, and somewhere on this website it talks about the POAC, Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. Oh wait, it's in the it's in his picture. He promotes himself as a Pentecostal, and there's a second reason that I am connected to this church without saying too much in order to protect this person's identity. One of my longtime mentors when I was at Teen Challenge, I've been to their house. There's a lot of things I could say about my connections back to Spruce School Community Church, but that's one of them. They're part of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. I'm a Pentecostal. Now, Interesting enough, Pastor David Wilkerson, there will be nude dancing in church, but this will never be widespread. I thought that was interesting because Pastor David Wilkerson, of course, is with the Pentecostals, and um, I'm a Teen Challenge graduate. And I thought it was interesting that he had a book called The Vision, and he said, nude dancing in the church. There will be nude dancing in the church. This will never be widespread. And what I see happening right now, um, he's talking about men taking off their clothing and dancing. He thinks it's hilarious. He can't see it. You know, and that leads me to the Bible verse. I'm just going to prove to you that I'm a Teen Challenge graduate. <laughs> Here it is. False prophets, my Teen Challenge. So there I am in Teen Challenge. That's back when I was in my 20s, late 20s. And um, there's me, and there's my certificate. I'm a Teen Challenge graduate. And then I went to Mexico and worked with the gangs. All right, last Bible verse, and we're done with this video. And uh, I don't typically do two videos, but this morning, you know, it's, how, it's interesting. This morning I posted that video. And by the way, this is, um, this is his YouTube, Watchman TV. And he has 177 subscribers and 224 videos. So he has way more videos than he does subscribers. And of course, he is being commissioned as a apostle to the world. And he's been working at his YouTube for, since, so, since 2012. So that's, he's been doing this for 12 years. He's got 177 subscribers. He just uploaded this 19 hours ago. He's had two views. One of them was me. All right. And of course, three views, two views, nine views. And that's why he's been working at it for 12 years. And oh, he's got three views there. So somebody else looked at that. So two other people. And, you know, like when I do videos, my, my, my Bickle videos, I have 6,000, 7,000, 12,000, 11,000. But if I come down and show you a video from Mark, 
Where's my last Mark Breezewa video? Um, my last, here it is. I have 600 views. <laughs> All right. So the point of that is, is that nobody really cares about this guy. But I, I care about the people that's inside of his church. 500 views. Hypnotize and brainwash. I don't even use his name in the title because he's such an unknown. New Apostolic Reformation. And that's the point of it is that people won't even click on this video. If you've watched it this far, thank you for liking the video. Subscribe. I'll do more updates regarding IHOP. But in my last video regarding regarding Mike Bickle, I said in that video, I said, I'm going to do an update video. I went and do my street outreach. I got home. I had the pastor, David Wilkerson, um, in my mail. And I thought, you know, I saw him doing the new dancing. I'm going to do an update video. So I believe absolutely it's important that I do these videos because, like I said, somebody caught up. And it's all tied into dominionism. They're going to dominionize the world, take over the world. There is no tribulation. Things are going to become paradise here on earth. So it's, it's a complete opposite of what the Bible teaches us. In the last days, there'll be turbulent, difficult times. And Jesus warned us in the last days, there'll come mockers and scoffers. In fact, bring me the t Bible verse. All right. They're, they are the kind who worm their way into the house, gaining control over gullible women. Who are loaded down with sin and are swayed by all kind of evil desires. Always learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Just as Janus and Jamarine appears Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men with depraved mind, who as far as the faith is concerned are rejected. Now here it is here. They're not going to get very far because in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. And that's where the point is, is that a pastor, a truly Holy Spirit filled on fire, God loving pastor, a shepherd of the flock, sees a man rip off all his clothing inside the solemn assembly of God, the church disrobe and run in front of the church in front of children and women naked the very last thing he would ever do is come into the sanctuary and repeat this blasphemous action as a punchline or a joke on a sermon about nakedness period and i don't believe that i'm a wrong if you were to go and talk to 10,000 pastors, Pentecostal charismatic teachers, look them straight in the eye and say, is it a good thing that a man ripped off all his clothes in front of the solemn assembly inside of a sanctuary of a church? Would you use it as a punchline of nakedness inside of your sermon? What are you talking about? The police should have been contacted immediately. How is this a punchline? And how is this man saying hallelujah? He's happy the Holy Spirit would make him go naked inside of church. We're living in the last days. We're living in the last days. And I think that in this Bible verse, but they will not get very far. Because in the, the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Thank you for watching. And I take my faith very serious. We're living in very serious times. All right. You know, we don't need Mickey Mouse entertainers claiming to be prophets to the world preaching blasphemous lies to God's children. What we need is men and we need women on fire for the Lord to proclaim the true and living gospel with a sober mind, empowered, and speak prophetically that we're living in very turbulent, difficult times. And now is the time to get right with your faith. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord, found in Romans 28. Romans, 8, 20, Romans 6, 23, forgive me. <laughs> Romans 8, 28 says... Uh, in all things, but Romans 8, 1, it says, there's no, therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. All right, now is the day of salvation. The good news of the gospel is that Christ died for our sins, found in Corinthians 15. According to the scripture, Christ died for our sins. We are in desperate need of a savior. There is a consequence for rejecting Jesus as your Lord and savior. All right, the Bible specifically teaches on hell, the eternal fire, the eternity of the soul. Jesus doesn't want anyone to go there. That's why he died on the cross for our sins. Hell wasn't 
prepared for you. Matthew 25, 41, it says, Jesus will say, depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was not created for you. That's why the Father sent his Son to die on the cross for your sins. That's the good news of salvation, forgiveness of sin, and an eternal reward. The gospel I preach and teach is that we need a Savior. And Christ Jesus died for our sins. It's a free gift. Grace and faith in Christ alone. Praise the Lord. I'm done with this video. Please join me in prayer for everyone sitting under this teaching of the inspired priest. And I pray the Lord's will be done in his life. May the Lord bless you. Keep you strong in the faith. And always remember, Brother John loves you.